It is about 10 p.m. in Mahar, a small village nestled in the Maharashtrian district of Raigarh. Any other night, Prem Sagar would probably be asleep by now. But today is different. He, along with his group of volunteers, is making preparations in anticipation of a particular truck. One that is about to arrive with a buffalo carcass. The natural death of this beast signals life for another. Come daylight, its meat will be carefully placed here, an open foraging ground, as a feast for Mahar's slowly reviving vulture population. So we drop uh, yesterday night one carcass from Mahad and uh, we drop it uh, here night and in the morning we have seen three to four flocks over here flock of 40 to 80 vultures uh, it has been visited here now there are 40 to 60 vultures which are feeding the feeding is going on ironically over the years these vultures in raigarh have been compelled to depend on their human friends to scavenge for them a cruel twist of fate the beginning of which could be traced back to the 90s from the long build to the Eurasian griffin, there are nine recorded vulture types endemic to India. At their peak in the 80s, these species collectively numbered over 40 million and were common sites on trees, rooftops and electric poles. In the mid-90s, however, their population nosedived by almost 90%, leaving only 19,000 surviving vultures by 2017. Experts have attributed the mass deaths to diclofenac, a popular veterinary drug used to treat inflammation in cattle. 51-year-old Prem Sagar, founder of an NGO dedicated to vulture conservation, explains how this drug wreaks havoc on a vulture's digestive system. That drug, uh, it uh, remains in uh, muscles of that uh, carcasses. When the cattle died, uh, maybe two or five or more injections, uh, it deposits uh, that diclofenac, uh, uh, whatever the remains, in the muscles. And when uh, the vultures, uh, they feed that uh, carcasses, the diclofenac enter into their uh, gut. And uh, they got the swelling of gut, gut problem, then the uh, swelling of stomach and the kidney failure. And so the bird became dizzy and it uh, fell down. In 2006, the government banned the use of diclofenac. 13 years later, a national plan was launched to conserve and actively increase the country's vulture population. But by now, challenges like habitat loss due to deforestation and a severe lack of food sources pose new problems, continuing to make survival an uphill battle for these largely shy creatures. <laughs> Natura Mahadi, former Sarpanch of Pangloli, a neighbouring village in Raigarh, is referring to a time when the relationship between villagers and vultures was perfectly symbiotic. Today, native wild trees that once served as vulture habitats have been replaced by large-scale cash crop plantations changing the dynamic from coexistence to one of conflict. For coconut farmers, for instance, vulture nests block access to coconuts, posing a threat to livelihood. For the birds, however, these tall trees are their only remaining option. The nesting uh, habitat, it is uh, very crucially selected. You know, uh, that uh, part of valleys, 
uh, which have uh, such a good vegetation it has a yearly uh, having spring uh, you know the uh, resources uh, water resources like that so such a, a delicate habitat those are very least in kokan areas or in uh, many part of uh, state and uh, india and uh, those have been destructed by uh, farmers or money lenders who are uh, acqui uh, uh, acquiring uh, you know on large scale the uh, valley lands and they destruct all uh, the wild trees and uh, there they are planting uh, cash cash crops like cashew nuts like uh, mango trees uh, similar likes the teak and uh, sal trees With the ability to dispose of animal carcasses quickly and efficiently, vultures have historically played a crucial role as scavengers the world over. Their dwindling numbers meant more and more cattle carcasses left out in the open, decomposing and threatening the health and sanitation of the region. To cope with the challenge, many locals in these villages began burying carcasses instead, leading to a new problem of starvation. for an already endangered population only vultures are giving uh, one uh, egg uh, in a year and so if that uh, chick is facing the problem of starvation then that generation fails to you know uh, to give new progeny the value of vultures in the ecosystem is underappreciated their diet is mostly one of carrion and their strong stomach acids are able to kill bacteria and viruses that would otherwise be transmitted to humans as well as spread among wild animals the metabolism of vultures is considered a true dead end for pathogens and unlike dogs and rats these birds don't become carriers of disease the hazards uh, fungus the hazards uh, bacteria the hazards uh, viruses they are growing on the dead carcasses so if there is absence of vultures then definitely you are in danger like if there is no vulture there will be no clean air and uh, there will be the viral or any other epidemics which is happening there is a juvenile call it's call for uh, feeding it's call for parent that they should come and feed the chick okay It's a juvenile call. For close to two decades now, Prem Sagar and his team of around 40 volunteers have been studying the behavior of vultures across Maharashtra, hoping to conserve and increase the population of this majestic bird. One of their main initiatives is to set up what they call fortnightly vulture restaurants, open scavenging grounds where the birds gather en masse to feed on meat procured from butchers. Uh, whenever we couldn't get carcasses we managed to purchase the uh, the uh, meat from uh, meat shop uh, keepers uh, so there is a union of uh, those meat uh, shop keepers and from those union we collect uh, waste uh, on sunday especially on uh, friday on thursday and then we collected that uh, used to uh, drop over that uh, feeding ground and in in this way we have strictly avoided the starvation of uh, you know the chicklings uh, in the nest from pangloli and chandol to pali vadgar and chirgaon six villages across maharashtra have set up vulture restaurants today these feeding grounds are visited by flocks numbering anywhere between 40 to over 200 with a chance to feast on more than 200 kilograms of meat once every 15 days importantly the locals of each village have come to play an equal part in the conservation system so we sir amala samjhavun sangitla अपने कह की बाबा आज जो पक्षी जो होता है प्रकल्प चांगला है और चांग प्रकल्पा कि संरक्षण होता है अपना तो यहाँ गाँव का कुछ जमीन तो मल क्या गेली नहीं है ये सार्वजनिक जमीन है सरकारी है तो हद्दत है तक तो आज चांगला प्रकल्प होता है तो चांगला है ना एक्चुअली हमारा जो चेन है ना सीस का पूरे रायगढ़ जिला में है उसमें बहुत सारी जगह जैसे कि नाने मछी पाली वाकण से बहुत सारे एरिया है जहाँ पर विलेजर से कनेक्टेड है तो उनके पास सबके पास हमारा कांटेक्ट नंबर होता है तो देन वो सागर सर को डायरेक्ट कॉल करते कि हमारे विलेज में एक कैटल का डेथ हो गया है तो आप लोग ले जाओ तो हमारा जो एनजीओ है उनके साथ दो पिकअप के वॉल्टियर्स है तो वो डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एरिया में जाके डम्प करते हैं फिर हम लोग में से कोई दो वॉल्टियर्स उसका स्किन टेयर करने की प्रैक्टिस करते हैं क्योंकि वर्चर दे कान ठंड 
दे कैन ओनली स्कैवेंज तो फिर हम लोग उनका स्किन निकालते हैं ओपन करते हैं एंड फिर दो दिन के अंदर पूरा मीट साफ हो जाता है So far this collective effort of feeding rescuing and treating the injured has managed to push the vulture population particularly of the white rumped and long billed vultures from 22 in 1999 to over 338 in 2021 Today Prem Sagar is trying to get school to be involved and invested in the program We have marked as N for nesting and r for roosting so roosting is for the roost and they sleep and nesting is for the build nest on the trees sarah rauts generation has the most to lose from wildlife extinction and young volunteers like her are also a strongest hope at 13 she is one of mahal's youngest conservationists today Vultures are very important in life because they clean our surrounding and uh, they are endangered species so please support us and please save our world